I'm going to talk um, w uh, about a question really that puzzles all of us. And there's so much going on in the universe that what scientists do, of course, is to look for systematic ways of accounting for what is observed. So they would uh, you know, formulate the so-called laws of nature. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, a law of nature is a summary of, um, uh, of observations. So you make a series of observations, and then you summarize them by a so-called law of nature, some of which are um, mathematical and some of which are more verbal. Uh, the question really arises is where do they come from? Uh, who imposed the laws on this universe that gives us a kind of a structure for understanding everything that is going on? There, as you would suspect, theologians, the bane of my life, like the, the bane of most people's lives, frankly, um, have sort of thought that they might be imposed upon us, rather like the sort of the rather like moral law, so that we would get um, uh, kind of the Ten Commandments, but in fact the laws of nature. Um, an acquaintance of mine, a philosopher, so I have to regard him with some suspicion. Um, I wouldn't go quite as far as saying a friend, but more of a friend, uh, m more of a friend in the in in the Facebook sense, I suppose. <laughs> um, came up with what he thought was the, the simplest possible account for the existence of um, systematic behaviour in the world. He's a grown man, but you would not suspect it from what he thinks. He thought, he claims that the simplest possible approach is that God is everywhere and pushes every electron in the right direction every moment and does so for the whole of um, eternity, if you like, for every electron, every proton, every neutron, and everything that man might in due course invent. Now, I don't think that's very plausible, uh, being rather profligate. And my, my, my view is that scientists are um, hewers of simplicity out of complexity that they, they look at this extraordinarily beautiful world and see it as a forest of events that has emerged from simple acorns. Okay. So they are looking for the simple infrastructure of, of the world. Um, things that I've partly represented by, by that. So we scientists are looking for simple explanations and not for sort of heavy-handed intrusion into the, the workings of the world. So I wondered, and what I want to try to convince you um, this afternoon, is whether there are three principles that might be adequate for accounting for all the laws of nature. And the three principles are indolence, doing nothing. Okay. And if indolence is too exhausting for you, uh, then allow anarchy to play a role. And if anarchy really is too troublesome to cope with, um, then invoke ignorance. So I think, and I'm going to try to convince you, that the laws of nature actually emerge from a combination of indolence, anarchy, and ignorance. Um, and um, let me see if I can do that. Um, I'm going to talk about the universe. And I'm not much of a historian, so this is the history of the universe, as far as I'm concerned, uh, starting from absolutely nothing. And I'm going to come back to tell you a lot about absolutely nothing later on. Um, many people think that um, once you've got a, 
some sort of laws of nature. Uh, once you've got a universe, then it can give rise to daughter universes and so on. And that our universe might be um, one of these daughter universes. So they think that the properties of the universe might emerge because you've got a universe which simply spawns another universe. I think that's shelving the problem. I want to think about the original universe, this particular universe, and um, which might be our universe. It's, no, no one knows whether we are a daughter universe or a grandmother universe. So, but surely, and when I say surely, I'm insecure in saying that, but um, uh, there must have been a moment back a long, long time ago when the universe emerged from nothing. That is, when something, when nothing converted itself into what seems to be something. So I want to focus on that point of the inception of the universe. Um, now, it, I mean, there are arguments against this. It might be that time is circular. It's very hard to see how that might be. You know, we've only experienced time for a short period of human existence. And it could be that in the scale of trillions of years, then time goes round in a circle, just like you know, space in a certain sense goes round in a circle. But let's discount that and suppose that there really was a beginning of, of time. Um, and really, that is the nothing that preceded what appears to be something. And I think that um, absolutely nothing has a number of properties. And I want you to see whether you agree with me, because my argument depends upon it. Um, I'm going to talk about absolutely nothing, and which I will call nothing with a capital N, although it will be sort of, um, I don't, don't want you to think that it's just empty space-time. I mean, that would be cheating. Uh, this is absolutely nothing at all. No space, no time, just absolutely nothing. So clear your minds, okay? Um, and the properties of nothing, as far as I'm concerned, is that it is totally uniform. And you can't have lumps of absolutely nothing more dense than somewhere else, right? So now we will represent it by a little icon like that. I think absolutely nothing is also isotropic in the sense that it does, if you think of, of a point somewhere and you go around it, nothing changes. I, what I, by which I mean, nothing doesn't change, right? <laughs> so you have to watch the language. I represent it like that, okay? And also by absolutely nothing, I mean that there is that it's totally empty. It's, it's not full of space. It's not full of time. I mean, this, this is a very Buddhist sort of talk that I'm, I'm giving you. But just clear your minds, lie back, and think not of England, but of absolutely nothing at all. Right? And I think when um, the uh, that's my uh, so this is my image of absolutely nothing. And this is my image of what we've got more or less now, showing lacking some detail, of course. Um, but I want to focus on the transition when absolutely nothing turned into what appears to be something. And talk first of all about the role of indolence. Now, there's a hero of mine, and I'm using hero in the feminine sense. Um, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll come to her in a moment. Um, one of the laws of nature, which I think is probably the most important of all the laws of nature, so let's get it out of the way, is the conservation of energy. Uh, and you're all familiar with what happens when a ball rises uh, and comes back down again. It might have a lot of kinetic energy initially, for more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today.
to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.